one of the deepest movements that's considered to be a, a tremendous cleansing exercise called in Indian Hatha Yoga a Kriya is called Nauli which uses the movements of the hips to activate the spinal muscles and turns your trunk into one heart. So the same way the heart will work to pump the blood by compressing the first chamber, pushing the blood to the second chamber. Second chamber of the heart expands and pulls the blood from the first to the second. You can make your spine work the same way. So I'll demonstrate making the right side of my abdomen firm and the left side relaxed. Pushing the blood from the right to the left side. Then the left side of the abdomen firm and the right side relaxed and it pushes the blood the other way. And this movement then is exactly what I was doing when I'm doing the side bend and forward bend. But in a much more rapid direct way, this exercise is done without breathing. This exercise is done while holding the breath out, which builds tremendous amounts of carbon dioxide inside the body. Physiologically, carbon dioxide acts in very positive ways. It increases the diameter of the vessels, of the blood vessels that go to the brain, so you get more oxygen to your brain. It increase, increases the, the blood vessel diameters going to the heart, so actually, actually you get more blood, more oxygen to your brain and to your heart when you're holding your breath out for a long period of time. And for a longer period of time if you hold the breath in. Also, carbon dioxide when it builds up in the form of carbonic acid will cause the vessels that go to your lungs to expand. So say for example someone has asthma the constriction in the vessels to the lungs often calls for the use of a puffing device and you know these drugs are not necessarily going to be very helpful for you in the long run but if you simply answer the call of nature when you have an asthma attack which is making your lungs go a wheezing effect. It's the body telling you, stop breathing. It's hard to breathe, so stop. And it's often a, a surprise to a person who's asthmatic that if they just stop breathing for a minute, allow a bit of carbon dioxide to build up, this immediately dilates, bronchodilates the vessels to the lungs and an in-breath is much easier. The other significant effect of carbon dioxide buildup is called the Bohr effect. The Bohr effect means that carbon dioxide is necessary to be present at any part of the body for hemoglobin to actually deposit its oxygen molecule when it arrives. So say for example the big toe needs oxygen. You might be able to get blood to the big toe but if there's no carbon dioxide in your big toe then the hemoglobin will just leave with its oxygen because it needs to swap it for the carbon dioxide. This is a lay explanation, but it helps make people appreciate that exercise is not something where you're trying to breathe more. Actually, fitness comes if you can do more but breathe less. A physically fit person is one who can run 100 meters the same time and distance as someone who's not so fit. You can tell they're fit because they're not breathing so much. Their heart is not beating so much by the end. So the adept yogi is considered to measure their lifespan not by the number of years they live, but rather by the number of breaths they take and the number of beats their heart makes. So by practicing in this way any sort of exercise, including simple walking, Movements which cause the hips and shoulders to cause a firmness to come to the spine, giving you core stabilization, while breathing diaphragmatically. This helps increase blood flow while decreasing heart rate. The other thing is that the more you learn to breathe less in your physical exercise practice, while still emptying the lungs periodically, this builds up an acidity, and that acidity so gentle acidity from carbonic acid. That means then that you don't crave to have acidity in your diet. It means then you can eat a lot less. Whereas most people do the opposite. Most people breathe so much in exercise because often they're told to do so. And eating so much in, in uh, breathing so much during exercise makes them very alkaline. Hyperventilation makes you alkaline. And this then makes you crave, after your exercise, 
acidic foods, which are the more stodgy foods, the high protein foods, the processed foods, drugs. And so by breathing less, by learning how to hold the breath in, as I'll demonstrate now, while still doing exercise, you get lots of benefits. 